Hi, I'm Christian, and in this PC Answers tutorial, we're going to look at how to edit your photos for free online using Photoshop Express. Now, there are many free uh, online editing tools, and we've covered uh, many of those in PC Answers, uh, but uh, this one uh, is attracting a lot of attention, obviously, because it's from uh, Adobe, the makers of uh, Photoshop, which is, of course, the uh, biggest name in photo editing. So head over to uh, photoshop.com, and you'll need to uh, sign in. You can click uh, Remember Me, um, and that will go into your Adobe account. Now, if you don't have one, um, there's a simple Join Now button. It's a very quick process uh, to go through, so let's just sign in. So now we're into the main interface, and it will uh, welcome you. You can actually even add your own uh, image there, and you can actually create your own uh, URL as well, Cushion Door www.cushionhall.photoshop.com So that's a simple way of getting to your, your online library and if you're familiar with Flickr um, you, can, you can do exactly the same thing with that service. Now you won't spend a lot of time in this particular interface, you probably want to go straight into your library and your gallery to edit images but if you look over here you have notifications and new stuff so you do get some important news uh, feeds there and that's a good place to get uh, the updates uh, from photoshop.com that uh, refer to Photoshop Express so you can uh, uh, learn more a bit about the service. So you click on My Library and you'll notice the whole thing has a very similar feel to Photoshop Elements uh, particularly version 7, uh, the, the latest one, which has this kind of grey background and although Elements is a, is a great uh, photo editing suite and we thoroughly recommend using it the Photoshop Express has been designed to really make things incredibly quick and it also links uh, directly with any other libraries you've got on the web or on your machine. Um, so if you look here under other sites, you can actually log into uh, a particular photo service. So we're, we're gonna actually going to choose uh, Flickr. We're going to choose Login. Click OK. That's just a warning about uh, Flickr needs to know that Photoshop wants to communicate with it. And we'll have allow pop-ups. Let's try that again. There we go. Now this will go through to uh, Flickr. We'll have to sign in. And we'll also have to approve the use of uh, Photoshop to, to allow it to connect. And this only has to be a, a one-off process. And this is the screen that you will be uh, faced with. Uh, you simply choose OK, allow it. And that's, that's fine. You can actually now shut that down. And if you go back to uh, your Photoshop window, if you click OK, and now you can see uh, that the bar is moving along and that is importing my uh, Flickr photos. Um, and also any f folders that I happen to have have with that as well. Um, and you can simply scroll down these these thumbnails, um, or you can actually rearrange them uh, in, in, in a different way. Here we are. We can see we're on the, this sort of grid view. If we choose that one, I've actually now tiled them like this, so you could could see a description if if any of these had it or what albums they belong to uh, and, and when they were taken. So you can get a bit more information uh, in one go. And there's also a built-in search function, so any tags you've got, or in fact the uh, name of uh, a particular photo, such as this, if I selected wedding, it would actually bring up all those tagged with wedding, or that had wedding in the title of that, that image. And there, it's a very, very efficient and, uh, and fast search service. That's, that's quite a handy if you have uh, hundreds if not thousands of uh, photos that you want to put on on Photoshop Express. So do remember that uh, Photoshop Express is uh, very much about uh, organizing your photos uh, on the web as much as it, it is about uh, making basic edits. And what I'm go just going to show you now is a few of the, the basic edits you can make. Let's just uh, find an image. Double click, it will actually uh, now open up that uh, thumbnail to the full uh, view of that image. There we go. Um, and it also has some arrows where I can actually continue to browse through the, through the library uh, if, if needed. And now, if you choose Edit, uh, it'll simply take just a few seconds to prepare that photo for editing. And here we are. Uh, the interface looks, looks very similar, except now you get a, a handy slider where you can actually uh, expand and just like the real version of Photoshop you actually get this little window here where you can actually scroll around 
uh, the image, and using these two in conjunction with each other is a great way of navigating around an image and uh, zooming in and out, etc. Now, any of these changes you do make, and they're on the uh, left-hand uh, library here, um, do remember it's probably best to save a, a, a copy, otherwise it will copy over the original that you've actually stored. Um, but if you need to compare to any of the original, you can simply uh, click View Original and you, you'll be able to see them uh, side by side so you can see the, the, the changes. So the first thing I'm just going to do, if I just zoom out again, is a uh, crop and rotate. Uh, and it gives you a handy little grid view. Um, and in many ways, this is actually an easier way of cropping than with the full version of Photoshop and uh, indeed Photoshop Elements uh, and many other services. Because this grid view not only helps you uh, decide on how much to crop, it's actually very useful for something called the, the rule of thirds, which um, many photographers subscribe to. And uh, that is how you actually frame uh, particular images so you have something offset to one side um, and photographers actually uh, take their images to comply with this uh, by imagining some sort of grid view so actually you can actually employ this to get that sort of effect afterwards so I'll just, uh, I'll just roughly do that that won't be the best uh, example if I crop something like that it would be sticking uh, the object here on, the, on sort of the left hand side and maybe bring it up even more so there'd be lots of clearance up here so I'll just click finish to actually crop that but there's also the uh, uh, this drop down menu here um, which has some presets for uh, cropping so we can crop entirely square or to uh, a preset of something you usually print out, such as a, a 6x4 photograph or an 8x10. Um, so these are quick ways to make those uh, direct crops to, to those sizes. Very, very, very handy for sort of family prints, etc. And if I click finish, we'll now uh, uh, crop that. Um, but we're now getting a, a, a warning that this will save uh, those changes back over the original photo, so so we don't want to do that. So if I click cancel and choose save copy, you'll now have this uh, new window where you can enter a new title. Uh, you can make, now make it uh, public if you wish, directly back to Flickr, um, and just click uh, save if you wanted to save that. So that's cropping, I'll just cancel that one and I'll now go back to uh, the library and if I if I actually hover up here it actually gives you a, a handy uh, scroll bar if you've ever used anything like uh, the browser Flock, there's one of these built in which uh, connects with uh, Flickr and that's an easy way of, of browsing through your library quickly when you're in this view where you see one um, slightly larger so I'm just going to set a picture of a lion here if I choose edit it'll now prepare that photo for editing again and open up into the edit window and as you can see on the left hand side here th these are really self-explanatory there's no uh, complicated sort of tool icons which the full version of Photoshop has which where you need a bit of uh, knowledge about brushes etc to uh, really get to grips with that these are sort of simple camera adjustments that uh, you really want to do with your photos uh, and one of those of course is exposure so if we click that um, and in Elements or the full version of Photoshop or even the GIMP, uh, you'll have something called Levels, uh, which is a, a slider sort of mechanism to uh, get the uh, exposure right. It's, it's, it's remapping the points for, for black and white. Often the, the problems with your ex exposure is only very slight, so uh, you really want to just simply go up a not notch or two, uh, 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 underexposing or over slightly overexposing an image to get the effect you want. So that's what Elements is now designed to do. So it simply gives you uh, a bunch of options below your original image uh, where you can simply darken or, or lighten. So if I choose just, just one step down, that would be slightly underexposed uh, and slightly overexposed. So if I look at that there, over is probably, uh, pr probably a little too much. And in fact, uh, the underexposed is probably giving, giving me a little uh, mood. So if I select uh, that one, which is slightly underexposed. And I could choose uh, save copy then, or I could just choose uh, an another option. So if I choose uh, saturation, for example, 
Uh, this will keep my exposure, but now give me separate options uh, for the saturation in the image. So obviously this one uh, is almost totally desaturated, it's almost black and white, there's a little bit of colour left. Uh, that's very saturated, going up to uh, quite oversaturated, you might say that's a, a little unrealistic, but some people like that kind of effect. So if I just go a step down, that's probably that's probably the sort of a saturation effect I, I want. Nice green grass there, and a nice yellow golden uh, colour for, for the line, so yeah, I'm happy with selecting uh, uh, that one. Uh, and to go with this, uh, something else you would, you'd really want to use is uh, is a touch of sharpening. Now sharpening is a tool which really should be very very easy, but in, in reality in Photoshop um, and Elements uh, it, it takes a bit of getting used to uh, to really get an effect you want. In uh, Photoshop Express it really couldn't be easier, you simply have a uh, a little box here that you can drag around to uh, to sample the exposure. Now, sharpness, you particularly want sharpness in the eyes and any facial features, so that's often uh, a good place uh, to start. And if I actually like, expand the image slightly there, it'll actually expand the, uh, uh, the, the rectangle there for me. Um, so if I just leave that around the eye, I can now see some separate options for sharpening. As you see, in real time, as I scroll along here, it sharpens or, or unsharpens as I move along. So that's the original. That would be very sharp indeed. As you can see, it's beginning to break up. It's getting a bit noisy uh, and a little unrealistic. So I might want to come down just a, just a touch. If I just choose that one, and then scale back to a more realistic size, you now see I've just added a, a touch of sharpening there, um, which has given me a nice sort of crispness to the image, particularly in the lines, sort of uh, the hair here, and particularly on these these blades of grass that are in focus, they, they're now uh, quite sharp. So that's just a few of the options in uh, Photoshop Express, which are really, really good to use. I mean, you get, get great results very, very quickly. Uh, so do get yourself a, an Adobe Photoshop account, it's absolutely free. Um, log in and you can uh, play around with any images you have on your machine or any other online service like Picasa or Flickr. And if you take a look at the tutorial in the magazine, we also look at uh, uh, some of these others in depth. We also look at the touch-up feature, uh, boosting your colours, and even how to turn to uh, to black and white there.